I got the opportunity, and I, I always tell people to see, I believe, one of the greatest art, rap artists. Um, I got the opportunity to work with, with the guy, and that's Tupac, you mm -hmm. know, and his work ethic at the end of the day, when you left the studio, you felt like, damn, I worked today. Mm. Whereas, you know, you go and prior to that, you'd go and do some sessions and you'd be working from, let's say, noon or one in the afternoon. Well, f for me, it would be around noon. Mm -hmm. And then you got to wait for two hours for the artist to show up. And when they show up, they got to, you know, get primed up. And then mm -hmm. when they primed up, the beats start going and then they start rapping. And by the time you look around, it's three in the morning and you barely got anything done. Mm -hmm. Whereas when this guy came, it was like, if the session is at, let's just say two in the afternoon, he's there at two. Mm -hmm. And by six in the afternoon, he already got like, let's say three to four songs completed and two more in the works. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't, you know, when, when to me the work ethics came in as, okay, we put a song up, we're gonna do the track, we're gonna work on the track, we're gonna work on the lyrics. Okay, we did that, take it down. Mm -hmm. Next, same thing, you know, lyrics, backgrounds, whatever we needed to do, take it down. Next song up, okay, them engineer dudes, they know how to do all the mixing and stuff, Ooh, we ain't wasting no time on that, let them fix it in the mix or whatever. Mm -hmm. and. So you really felt accomplished. Yeah, the production was high. It's like, oh man, yeah, you know, you know, this is good. You know, it's like the guy came. Come on, man. You know, the work ethic speaks for itself. The guy came, came in, and in a month he did a double, a, a, a double CD. So was this was this all eyes on me? Is your all, first project you worked all with eyes on me? Mm -hmm. And then you know, it's it's, it's kind of like. You know, when you look at that project and the type of work that went in, mm -hmm. it's like everybody in the building stepped their game up. I mean, you name the artists at the time, they 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 elevated the way that they worked. And, um, you know, I, I always say um, this guy uh, set the bar for rap as it is today as far as the work you know i'm not saying everybody has those type of work ethics but you you, you can always tell the winners work like that the guys who who you know have an idea of of for instance the uh, the value of, of of studio time and what a contract is all about because you know you know when you sign a contract with a label mm -hmm. and, and, and and they put you in a studio mm -hmm. that money's coming out of your pocket at the end of the day right. you know they got to recoup all of that and right. and so so that's what I'm talking about having that mindset that when I get to the studio it's not about smoking a bag of weed and and drinking some Hennessy and shooting the shit. It's not about the party. It's not about the party. I mean, yes, we want to have a vibe, but we want to get work done. Right. You know, and um, I saw that through that individual, you know. It's amazing because the way you speak about it is you humanize them in many ways. You call him that individual or that guy. Yeah. And yeah. and to, to many, he's, you know, an icon that many can't even fathom what it would have been like to be in his presence or around that um, that that personality at that time. I, 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 I refer to, to Tupac Shakur as that guy because I saw him as as a person I, I never got off on the on the rock star. I knew what I knew you know who he was and I knew his his status as far as you know, an entertainer, right? But I, I, I value the fact that you know he was human, right? Okay, and one experience I have as far as as work goes, I remember sitting, you know, um, I remember him writing a song. I think it was um, it was the John B. song he was writing, and uh, I forgot the name of the uh, the title of the uh, the tune, but um, 
he was sitting there at the board and he was focused, he was writing. And I re remember back in the day, you know, we had two inch tape on a studer and there's one thing we could do which is always cycle the tape. So when the tape hits a certain spot, close to the end, it'll just automatically stop and rewind. Mm -hmm. And so I had the, uh, the, 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 the machine set up, he was listening to the instrumental, and I was working, you know, fixing the mic, making sure the mic was set right, and, you know, compression, and I had all my, my stuff together. And at some point, it, the, the, the reel cycled off. Mm -hmm. And he jumped up and he said, hey, hey. And I, I, I recognized like, oh, oh, the real stop. I never looked at hey. Mm -hmm. I looked at the real stop. Mm -hmm. And I ran in the room and I rewound, you know, reeled up the tape and everything and pushed play. And I commenced to doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And he said, stop, stop, stop. And so I stopped the tape. He said, hey, man, when I'm talking to you, man, don't ignore me. I said, look, man, you are sitting down and you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. Okay, my job is to make sure that that tape is on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, to be honest with you, I wasn't ignoring you. Mm -hmm. I was just doing my job, mm -hmm. you know, and I just wanted to make sure that I, I got it done as fast as possible without interrupting your flow. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. And I pushed play. I went back to doing what I was doing. doing it. And ever since then, that dude, you know, whenever I was available, I got to work with Tupac Shakur. My name is Wyatt Barkley, better known as Dub B. As a producer and performer, my love for music has taken me to the industry's biggest stages. But beauty is my passion. And ever since I could walk, I've been immersed in the game I love, which is golf. And I was raised to compete on golf's biggest stages. Now I'm bringing it all together. Come and join me as we feed body, soul, and mind and unlock some of the most beautiful experiences the golf world has to offer, where everything exists above par. From the club to the tee, come travel with Doug B. Them dealing was never seen, bitch, red, green, fairway, dream, bring it all to reality, right here on Above Par. In Cinema the, Libra. Cinema Libra. Yep. Yeah. Studio B. Studio B. Follow me in this the way. Studio B. You know, into Studio B. It is, uh... So Lance, uh -huh. where, we, where we at right now? We're in George Lucas's old uh, THX studio. This is the first THX studio he worked the in. The very first THX studio. In fact, he built this. We haven't uh, changed anything. Skywalker. Skywalker Films. Amazing. LP. <laughs> What's up, buddy? The legendary Lance Pierre. How you doing? We're back at the control table together. Luckily not working on one of my projects, so you might run out the room. <laughs> I'm like, fuck! Where you go? What's wrong with this dude? It's done! Oh, hey, ping! <laughs> and I'm right. It's the fucking greatest part is I'm right. You know? Yep. Just remember that. When you question yourself, Marvel. you're usually right. Right? <laughs> The Marvel. Let's tell the Marvel story. You want to tell the Marvel story? Yeah, we can tell the Marvel story. Yeah, go because ahead. That, you know, because that was day one. Day one. I want to hear your version of the Marvel story because my version of the Marvel story is we, we, we. The song was done. Yeah. The song was actually done, but you okay, heard. Okay, we're, we're in my studio. Yeah. We yeah. just met for the first time. First time. First time. Tommy D comes with you. Yeah. We'll get into Tommy D in a little we'll, later. A little later. But, yeah. But, but 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 we we completed this uh, a couple of mixes that day. And you're still trying to get a feel for who and what's going on in here. You're right. In the studio, it's see right. real. And, and still trying to get a feel for you. <laughs> yeah, 100. percent And 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 and. and and, um, you know, we complete this song, but for some reason I'm wondering, because it, it, in my mind I'm going like, what's wrong with this guy? What, what is he hearing that I'm not hearing? And, it, it you know, it, it was persistent that there was a click, there was something there. And I don't know, it might have been fatigue, ear fatigue or something like that where I didn't hear it, you know. Um, but Tommy for sure didn't hear it. Tommy didn't hear it. <laughs> no, he didn't hear it. And, and and I was straining and 
you know, as the night went on and we got a little bit more fatigued, you know, drinking and boozing and everything, smoking and everything, um, a lot of fatigue started setting in and frustration. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I don't know what's wrong with this kid. I've <laughs> never seen this before. But the, you know, everything came to a head on the way from the studio to the hotel when we we, we were in the car. Late at we, night. We, we was listening to the music, and it was like, click, click, click. But I still didn't even hear that. Right. And then we pull up to the gas station. The hotel. It, it, was, was it the hotel? We finally or the gas got back to the hotel. We got back to the hotel, and I said, Hampton Inn. We got back. And you went to the tire of the blazer and pulled out a marble. <laughs> and I was like, oh, smack. Yeah, it was an Escalade, by the way. Escalade. <laughs> yeah. Escalade. Yeah, yeah, Escalade. Yeah, yeah. Escalade. Tan Escalade. <laughs> I remember. And, um, you know, what that did was it allowed me to go and sleep on it. Mm -hmm. And then we addressed that issue the next day. We did. And Tommy was like, he's got Marvel ears or <laughs> some shit. <laughs> He meant Marvel ears. Right. That's what he meant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Marvel. That's Marvel right. ears. Yes, yes. Actually, it was a great way to break the ice. Yeah, right? it was, you it know, was, and yeah. and that started off a long, a long, like I would say, brotherhood. You yeah. know, I mean, it's been more than just a friendship. I mean, we've yeah. worked so many different levels together mm -hmm. of this industry. We've we've spent so many different hours and so much time. But first and foremost. Tell us about Lance Pierre. What got you into music? Um, for me, I think uh, music was just something that I, you know, being, uh, I think my, my right brain, you know, the creative side, um, just gravitated to um, from a, a, a child and, um, I don't want to get too cultural with it, but it's kind of like I was always around music, you know, the the church, going to church and and singing and stuff like that. And, you know, it's kind of like my family's religious, but not overly religious and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we got a secular side and we got a sacred side. And the secular side was always more dominant for me. Mm -hmm. Can't speak for anybody else. And uh, I, I, I took piano lessons when I was younger. Um, <clears throat> for myself, um, so so I'll say from from a child, growing into adolescence and then my teenage years and so on, I had I continued to evolve. Now, getting into rap music, it wasn't um, first time I got into rap music. I, uh, I got blown away. I went to New York and it was this this new thing. I'm with family and. Uh, and this is this whatever it is. It sounds good. And I heard uh, Grandmaster Flash and mm -hmm. and and all of that. And I wanted to be a part of it. Um, what year was this in? This was like um, 1982, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. And um, then you know, um, living in Los Angeles, things started to evolve and. Los Angeles started to become a part of the whole rap, hip hop culture, and you know, of course, we have the famous breakouts of you know the NWAs, the Ice Ts, and so on and so forth. But we actually started out <clears throat> where I lived with um, uh, music people. Music people was a DJ um, crew. It was mm -hmm. music people and Uncle Jam's army. Mm. And I lived in that area along with Battle Cat and everybody, and we was the young guys who was trying to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, formed our own crew and all that good stuff. And, you know, I mean, we did the things that uh, uh, young urban city uh, uh, dwellers or young urban city uh, uh, youths was doing back at that time. Now, fast forward, um, for myself, the this part, the production uh, of music started um, with Battle Cat, mm -hmm. okay, and Battle Cat had a, a an SB 1200 
And he and and I, of course, as a youth, used to rap and write rap rhymes and had a you know, little crew and everything. And we used to go and like bring him records and say, "Make this beat right here." And he'd make beats and. And somewhere in between that, I said, you know what? I'm going to get me an SB 1200. Mm -hmm. So saved up, got around, you know, $2,500, went to it, Nadine's, right next door to Paramount Studios. Wow. That, that used to be a, an equipment store. Ty Dollar Sign's dad, Tyrone, when I went in there, Tyrone was like, uh, we don't have the SB-1200, but we have this machine. It's an MP-60. And I'm like, oh, shit, look at them big-ass buttons and shit. <laughs> it's not the right machine. But anyway, I'll take it. And from there, um, you know, at the time, uh, I was also in the service. And uh, I went on a Westpac, and I started making beats. Now, um, guys who was on my ship... Uh, one one of them, his name is Trip Loke. He is a member of the Twins, mm -hmm. West Coast rap group produced by um, Warren G. Um, also uh, Malik uh, Strader, um, Malik. Uh, his rap name was Leak Rat, and he he performed with Coolio <clears throat> mm -hmm. at the time. And I'd be making all these damn beats, and these guys. Um, they liked it, you know what I mean? They liked what I was doing. And this year, what year is this? This is 19, um, 1990. Okay. And um, the year Chub Rock jumped up on the scene. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, um, yeah, so so fast forward, you know, I got out the service and, and I just, I, at the time I was doing research and, and you know, as far as, producers it was cool but then one day I went uh, you know I went to um, Echo Sounds in uh, Atwater Village to a Coolio session and there's this dude Bob sitting at a desk it mm -hmm. was a trident and I was like ooh I could do that Bob white dude he had a, he had his gun and his pistol on the on the console <laughs> you know he did with gangster rapper so he was gangster with it too <laughs> And you know he did. You know he did all the all all, all the big. He mixed all the big s songs. You know, uh, Gangsta's Paradise and all of that. Mm -hmm. And and when they had a break, I'm like, dude, how do you how do you remember all this stuff? Mm -hmm. And he says it's like your car stereo. It's all the same thing. And he just went down the, the whole strip, and he went from the dynamic section to the EQ. To the fader, he said, "This is your volume, just like how you would turn up the volume on your, you know, your car." And he just, in a basic way, explained it. And from then, I was like, "Okay, so what else do I need to do? You know, you know find you a, a a school you can attend." And I, um, at the time, the school's no longer around, but it, uh, it was a, it was the LA Recording Workshop in North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, I think they later on moved to. Sunset Boulevard. I don't even know if they're still around, but um, I went there and um, you know spent um, a couple of months really getting the uh, I say the basics because I think you learn a whole lot more when you're actually doing it. It's like anything else, you know. You can read a book about take you know photography or film or anything, but until you start doing it and, exper and experimenting on you and experiencing it. That's when it comes, you know, everything you, you read on the paper jumps off. And so, so for me, that's what happened. I got a little, I got that experience, that classroom experience, and then I went to work at Track Record. Mm. And at Track Record, that's when things really started popping for me because I walked into Track Record. <clears throat> um, Tom Murphy was like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, you, you're not going to make a whole bunch of money. I'm like, I didn't come here to make a whole bunch of money. I came here to... for experience. And as soon as I got through that interview, and I walked down downstairs. You've been to track records, so you know they got it upstairs. So as soon as I walked downstairs, yeah, exactly. So as soon as I walked downstairs, lo and behold, who's walking in? Battle Cat. Crazy. Lance, come in here, man. 
And Tom Murphy was like, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Yeah. Like meant to be, just straight up. It was just meant to be. And so um, from, from track record, I started working with a rock band because that's what tra track did. And, and, and I, I feel like that experience was so valuable because you learn how to track drums. Mm -hmm. You learn how to track, you know, acoustic instruments, how to mm -hmm. mic, how to do mic settings and mm -hmm. stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I was working with a group called the Godheads Rock Group and was doing all kind of crazy stuff. I love working with engineers who like to, to experiment, you mm -hmm. know, put a mic in the parking lot. Let's mm -hmm. see what happens, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, that type of stuff. And uh, after work, working with this band... Um, it was a, a, a session that came in and it was a death row session. And it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was um, Kevin, uh, Kevin Ramsey, Ramsey Lewis's son. He was uh, one of the, um, the, Kevin Lewis, Kevin Lewis. And, and um, Kevin Lewis, you know, I, I assisted him and Rick Clifford and, Kevin Lewis asked me, so what do you, you know, so what do you do here? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm an assistant, and, you know, I like it. He said, how much are they paying you? I'm like, it don't matter, minimum wage or whatever. I'm mm -hmm. cool with it. I, that's not what it's about. He said, come to Death Row, and we give you $20 an hour. And I'm like, oh, really? So did you know about Death Row at this time? I knew about Death Row, but, you know, everybody was basically, you know, as far as, as Death Row was up and coming, there was lots of stories that you heard, and you know the the fights and the, you know the disruptions. And I really didn't give a shit because a lot of those dudes came. Like for instance, I worked with Warren G. I worked with Warren G. And I worked with Greg Geisenhower. Greg Geisen right in the beginning. Yeah, you know we worked on the you know. Uh, all, regulators all all Warren stuff right and worked on the twins the five footers all those groups he produced at track record and I assisted Greg Greg guys now and Greg was always show in, in fact we, we was working on a dats when a dats was the digital format mm -hmm. that's why a lot of you know when you listen to Warren G stuff his stuff is super clean and you're like well I, that was ADATs, and mm -hmm. so um, I'm working with that technology right there. So I was I, I was pretty cool. I was comfortable working at Track Record, and there was no there was no pressure. Mm -hmm. But I, I had three kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, at the time I was what uh, 28. I had three kids, mm -hmm. three little kids. Mm -hmm. And twenty dollars an hour—that mm -hmm. was—that meant uh, a significant, you know, jump in my pay. Mm -hmm. Now I can do some different things. So um, I remember it was a uh, something that happened to my wife, and I couldn't. It was an emergency, and I couldn't make it in. And me and me and Tom had some words, and so I decided to take the death row job. Yeah, to, well, you know, I just, just decided to go check it out and see what was up. Mm -hmm. And um, Kevin Lewis told me, you know, yeah, show up here at midnight one one night. And this is what year? This is, um, I'll say, ni 1993, 4. Mm -hmm. And um, I show up, and, you know, I'm sitting there. I was supposed to assist an engineer. And this is your first midnight session? I've never done, I've worked into midnight, but <laughs> yeah. I've never started a session at midnight. Right, and and right. so so I go I go go out to Can-Am and I'm sitting there and, and, and I'm like in my car, like, what is this all about? And I'm questioning myself and then all of a sudden these guys show up. And um, it was Heron, um, an artist named Rick James, um, uh, an artist named Red Rum, a female artist named Red Rum, and um, I forgot his name. I should know his name because he just passed. But anyway, you know, four four artists and a uh, 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 Heron. He's like, you the engineer, you know, yeah, big word. I'm like, 
I'm not the engineer. I'm supposed to assist the engineer. Um, but I'm here and I'm ready to go. And he's like, you know, that engineer, you pussy. He's had, had his little saying and he says, come back tomorrow. And so the, uh, the same time or earlier, where am I coming back? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Midnight. <laughs> so I come back and uh, we get in the studio and the engineer didn't show up again. This is my first time meeting Tommy D because I didn't know the room. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm setting up. I set up, you know, we had drum machines and all that. I set stuff up and um, I'm trying to get the mic in, you know, okay, boom, get the mic in the input. And um, Tommy walks in. He said, hey, you brand new. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And he says, you, you need any help? I'll be in this, uh, this, you know, this other room over here. And that was my first time meeting dude. And, um, you know, I went ahead, did the session. Um, in fact, they had no tracks or anything. And so, you know, with the, the skills that I had, I, you know, just banged out one track for me. I'm like, what? You can make beats too? It's crazy. <laughs> I, you know what I think it was? I thought it was a, it was a, um, organized session an organized interview to oh, see what oh. this guy can do because oh. after showing up for two or three midnights yeah um heron said i'm gonna let you know what's up with you mm. and doing tracks for these guys you mm -hmm. know um and completing songs for them um I, I started working during the day with um dj quick and uh, Danny Boy, he was the mm -hmm. R&B artist on the label at the time, and um, started working with him. I I do sessions in the morning with uh with Daz, mm -hmm. you know, just tracking sessions, track vocals and stuff like that, and uh, you know things got to rolling, and it wasn't as bad as people thought. All you had to do was do your damn job. That's about it. I never, you know, I just did what I had to do, and was boom, and it turned out to be real sweet because. You know, I ended up having, you know, as I got more experience, my relationship, you know, I didn't, I didn't burn any bridges over a track record. I was able to still go do sessions over there and do sessions at Can-Am. So, you know, um, things really worked out. But that's how I got into it, a little long-winded to get to the point. But, you know, to, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. but, but that's how I got into, you know, the whole thing. That's a whole long-ass story. But. Yeah, but it's your story. Yeah, I, I mean, that's important. Like, you know, that's your story. Mm -hmm. And that's what got you to this next level of when your total career just mm. changed. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, the you were part of one of the most dynamic mm -hmm. times in hip-hop. Yeah. And with one of the most intense labels hip-hop's ever known. Mm-hmm. And it was all, it was based off the music because mm -hmm. it was a music label. Yeah. But it was an experience beyond that. Right. But you saw the music. You saw the creation. You've been able to be part of that history. Mm -hmm. And seeing it from the perspective of the creative perspective is one of the most unique perspectives to see it from. Because maybe some of the, the artists can talk about that, mm -hmm. but you saw all the levels of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I totally agree with uh, with that perspective, and, and it's um, for me. When I look back, or when I reflect on on that time, you know, I hear a lot of stories about, you know, yeah, I was here doing this and doing that, but when I reflect on it, I, I see individuals who who had work ethics, but then they had to step it up because it, it, it was like being on a basketball team and not, you know what I mean? It's five guys on a basketball team and if all five of them is playing in sync, you got a dang good team. But, you know, if only LeBron is doing it all, you know. The starting lineup, you talked about a starting lineup. Who was the starting lineup that you worked with at Death Row? Uh, starting lineup I worked with at Death Row was uh, uh, Dr. Dre. I worked with Snoop Dogg. I worked with Nate Dogg. I worked with 
Dog Pound, period, DJ Quick, uh, when Tupac Shakur came on board, worked with Tupac Shakur, worked with the, um, the Outlaws, Outlaw Immortals, worked with uh, Lady of Rage, worked with um, everyone. Everyone on that label. On, I mean. on that Jewel worked with you know again you know the Danny Boys worked with you know Tyrone Rice, Tyrone Rice in fact uh, the 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 guy who who produced um, uh, Machiavelli I mean the uh, the Hail Mary song mm -hmm. and um, you know th you know that's a whole different story but as far as the the roster I worked with everybody on the roster mm -hmm. worked with everybody on the roster and it was you know again um, it was history it's history right now and I'm to, to tell you the truth uh, the way this new generation or or you know talk about um, that era. Mm -hmm. Uh, it it makes me you know I'm grateful mm -hmm. to have had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to work with uh, Suge Knight. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to work with you know Dr. Dre. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to work with you know uh, the Snoops and everybody who who really was a was a major part of that movement because that's when you know the G funk era that's what they call it mm -hmm, back then mm -hmm. that G funk era was really popping off and these guys were like you know like bad boys was the 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 squad back east this was the squad in the west yeah, you it know was. and and um and your yeah. names and every it, it, it the credits on <laughs> The album's Whether released it's from, yeah. from, from from assisting an engineer to actually engineering, you know, and and there are uh, songs and albums that where I was supposed to get credit where I didn't get credit, and that's just how the game yeah. goes, man. But yeah. you move on. But the one thing you can't take from me—that's what I tell everybody—is the experience. Straight up, probably one of the most still to this day talked about hip hop records mm -hmm. out there. And your your actual uh, your actual tie to it is is went beyond just recording it. You were the you were the you and Tommy D. Can you tell that kind of tell us that story? Tommy, you, you know you got to know Tommy. Yeah. But but Tommy's the lead engineer at Death Row. Uh, at Death Row, he, he was one of the lead engineers at Death Row because there were several. Mm -hmm. Let's you know, let's clear that up. But on this particular project, he was the lead engineer, and I was his assistant. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you know Tommy D, he was the lead engineer, <laughs> and I was the engineer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you gotta know Tommy D though, but he was the lead engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On that, he mixed Mac. He 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 mixed a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, Hail Mary, and he 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 mixed and touched a whole bunch of songs on the record. Mm -hmm. As far as you know, like the recording and so on and so forth. You know, I did a whole lot of recording, a whole lot of transfers and stuff, and. We worked on it together. It was like a a collaborative of uh, a, a, um, a collaborative effort mm -hmm. between both of us. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like I was sitting in the corner reading a magazine while he, you know, he said, "Pull this up, plug that in, or whatever." It's mm -hmm. like, yo, man, you know, uh, I'm about to order a bunch of outboard gear. What you think? And Tommy's like, outboard gear, because he's used to using the SSL. But I'm like, come on, man. You know, based on my experience, like I explained earlier at, at track record tracking and so on and so forth, I felt like, let's do something else. Let's let's pull out a whole different box of crayons and start doing some color in here. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, we ordered some nice juicy. Well, I ordered a whole bunch of nice juicy gear, and we started going different places. Um, unfortunately, we mixed, we made, well, 
unfortunately, we were only able to mix like, I'll say, three or four songs at Can Am. And the rest was mixed <clears throat> at Track Record and uh, Music Grinder. Mm. Um, because we, you know, there was a whole lot going on back then and they wouldn't just let you have the studio like to, for a week to just mix, mm -hmm. you know, you'd start a mix and you know, the way the process is, we want to, you know, it ain't like Pro Tools now where you just turn the computer off and everything stays the way it is. Back then you had to block off the board, make sure nobody touched the EQs, put signs, pictures, all kind of shit, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Just in case somebody moved one knob. Mm -hmm. And so they, they did not allow for that. And so we had to move around to different studios where we could get that. Tupac, he advocated for that. And once we, get the, we, we, we got the track record, it was a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, between myself and Tommy, um, we really put in a lot of time, man. You know, he'd be knocked out sometimes, you know. I mean, sometimes he'd be missing an action and you got to be like, mm -hmm. well, you know, he just, mm -hmm. he went to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, we'll push play ball, and you, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But we, we had to keep it going. Yeah. And um, in fact, that was one of the first projects that, and a, a lot of people, I, I don't know if they know, but Pro Tools as it is today um, was actually, um, I want to say it was Sample Cell, or it was, it might have been Sample Cell, and we had um, a guy, um, Justin Iam, he had a, a four channel Pro Tools, like I said, and we wanted to, to start editing the record, you know, with all the crossfades and all of the, uh, the, the skits and stuff like that. He came along, so it was myself, Tommy, me, and, and um, Justin. Mm. And um, we just kept working the record. In fact, when it was time to master, it was like, go to mastering. We have to go to Eddie, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Eddie. Mm -hmm. And so we, we took the Pro Tools rig. He's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it was so new. <laughs> it was just like, I'm, what happened to the rig? Hey, man, we were still mixing, and they told us to put it on Pro to, Tools. To stop and, and come to mastering. Mm. He said, but you're bringing me this. What is this pro? Yeah. And so we, uh, I'll say a certain portion of, um, of that record ran through Pro Tools. Mm. We'd have Pro Tools set up, and if we needed to track like some acoustic instruments, we'd automatically do it and dump it to tape and so on and so forth. So we were kind of like, uh, I'll say, that record got a lot of analog and digital you know, it, it 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 spent a little bit of time in the in it spent a lot of time in the analog space, but then it also spent time in the digital space. That's that's amazing to know that that's one of like the first Pro Tools records, right? Mm -hmm. Um, tell me because I've heard it before, and you're on the subject right now. Tell me the story of when you you're working on the record, and Pac leaves. Mm -hmm. the studio to go to Vegas. Oh. And where the where the record was at that point and what happened after. Um I think we was um it was actually mixing. Um so the record was f complete. It was not at least to me it wasn't 100% complete uh, you know some of the mixes uh, were uh, I would say um, mixes that we wanted to readdress you know we we got it in, in, in you know at a certain spot and we wanted to come back and kind of like readdress certain issues and we never got the opportunity to so at the time um, I was at can am so so when when Tupac left to go to Vegas, we re, at track record what we recorded was that 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 boxing intro mm -hmm. with Mike Tyson or whatever you know. Mm -hmm. Let's get ready to rumble and all that. We did that, 
and um, for that fight, for that fight, and then what we did, you know, uh, myself and Tommy, what we did was we went back and we continued, you know, um, uh, working on the various tunes that we thought were were there, there was a couple of tunes dude that wasn't even done. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they had vocals and they had a, a kick and a snare. But you know, as far as the the Additional musical production. elements and stuff, that it, it it they weren't up to par, and so we were dead focused on that, on on the uh, fleshing those songs out. Yeah, yeah, um, making those songs uh, uh, songs, making those beats songs to fit on a record, and, and they made the record. Yeah, yeah, all, all of them did. Um, but you know, again, that's where we were when when Tupac left uh, mm -hmm. to go to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, you know, um, we all know what happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, for you know, from for myself, I I always you know I think a little bit different, and with this, when Tupac went to Las Vegas, like I had already I. I'd seen what the 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 the, the album was gonna look like. Cover the cover. I, I saw it all. You know, the cross, all, all all of that. And I kept saying to myself, "How is this record gonna top that All Eyes on Me?" Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't necessarily about topping All Eyes on Me. It was like, "How is it? You know, how is this record gonna sell a million units?" Mm -hmm. What kind? Of, I mean, this is come. This is following a, a, a smash, you know, a smash album. You know, I mean, every song on that record was like gold. So, um, my thoughts was, was was along those lines when I heard about the uh, the, the the shooting incident. Well, you know, we all heard Tupac Shakur got shot before. You know, and uh, oh, okay, you know, that's Tupac. He gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, but that wasn't the case, and it was it it, it it was quite a shock. You know, what I mean, but for individuals like myself and Tommy, who was working on the record. Literally mixing the project. Literally mixing the project. We had to turn it in. You know, we was wondering, you know, why we turned it for real. We, till this day, you know, like I said, you, you know, what uh, I said earlier before we started recording, um, like for instance, this uh, uh, project that's on the screen right now. Uh, we premiered it on Monday. And we're sitting there going, okay, we got to readdress this and readdress that. You know, like, you know, when you worked on projects, mm -hmm. you go all the way to mastering it and say, let's go back. Yeah, yeah. And take care of this. So it was, a, you know, it was, it was sort of like that. I, you know, um, I was thinking like, maybe this is a stunt. Hmm. That's how they're going to promote this. Hmm. Okay, you know, national news. Oh, you can't go, you know. But, but uh, that's not how it went down. Mm -mm. You know, <laughs> my th that was just in my head. Everything else, I remember Tommy D. That we went and had a drink. We sat at the bar, and uh, I think we both were like in the dumps. Like, what? You know, what's going on here? What's this all about? And he's like, uh, you know, I'm gonna go down to uh, to, to uh, the office and pick up your check. I'm like, yeah, 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 go ahead. I'm sitting there, I'm getting fucked up at this bar. And I'm like, and he comes back, he said, well, you know, what do you think? I'm like, I don't know what to think. He said, well, I'll tell you what it is. It's all downhill from here. I always remember. <laughs> I said, okay, but it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 you know, I can move on and say, you know, Tommy said it was... Um, it was downhill from there. Well, it was really not downhill for, for you know, at least for me because I, I got a chance to, you know, I, I did a, uh, some Nate Dogg records. Um, for a good relationship with him. Um, uh, I, um, I got a chance to, uh, 
to work with M. Eminem. Uh, yeah. You won a Grammy with him. Yep. You know, on the Marshall Mathers uh, uh, LP. Which was Stan, the Stan record. The Stan record. And what did you do on the Stan the, record? I like, mixed the Stan record. You mixed you know, the record. And, I mean, uh, that was one of the most iconic records off M's project. There we go. So, so you know, the things, things just kept, things got better. Mm -hmm. Things got better. Um, All the way to the day that you and Tommy D reunited again to mix another record. Yeah, 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 and 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 you know, myself and Tommy, our relationship is you know, um, like I said, we have a a good standing, uh, you know, amongst each other. Um, I think, you know, as roommates, you know, we became like brothers, mm -hmm. and you know, it's kind of like. You know, um, and it's all through the music and all through the relationships that we had and that we forged from, like I said, from day one. That yeah. day he peeked him, his head out the room, going, hey, you need help? Holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Until, you know, our last days. At the, In fact, he, he continued to work with Death Row. Uh, um, <clears throat> Till the end, uh, uh, yeah. Till the till the very till the wheels fell the fuck off. Right. Put it that way. And you he know. Was there. You know. So um, of course we know that there's a Snoop uh, a went, new, a, went there's yeah. a new era mm -hmm. and Snoop has acquired uh, his label as it should have been mm -hmm. from the jump. Nineties, mm -hmm. it was Death Row. Mm -hmm. Then then you and Tommy. First time back in the studio when we, you met me, go from mixing Machiavelli, taking a hiatus, coming back. No, in I didn't the, take a hiatus. No, no, not, no, no, together. Oh, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, kept yeah. grinding. You, yeah, you won a Grammy. Uh, like, yeah, like, you kept like, grinding. Like, but I called you and I'm like, yo. Yeah. Uh, Noble puts us in touch. And yeah, 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 yeah. Noble. From Noble. the Outlaws puts us in touch. Yeah. And you're like, I'm sitting here with Tommy D. Right. 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 <laughs> like, I'm sitting here with Tommy D. And the last time we were in the studio, we finished Machiavelli, and he's down to come to Seattle with me. Right. And you guys didn't know what to expect, and I didn't know what to expect. And next thing you know, the Surreal Way album was the la went from, I mean, for me, thinking that that was the last record that you all worked on together to now working on the Surreal Way was, was an experience, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that helped me grow. You know what I mean? And then we had this this journey of cultivating this next chapter of Sea Wheel in the Northwest, right? Mm -hmm. Having the opportunity to to come to Seattle and working on you know with your label at your studio and uh, you know um, you know working with not just yourself but various local artists that you was affiliated with at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you're still affiliated with those guys, but you know that was you know. To me, that was promising. Mm -hmm. You know, that was promising, and also the experience—the experience with you. You know, I remember the 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 the, the one thing was the the NBA playoff when we went to to Vegas, and you mm -hmm. know, you had a series of meetings set up. I mean, I'm talking. You know, we ain't talking to. to to, to, to Johnny, who 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 got the independent label over here, we talking to major. Def Jam. We were, out we were there. talking to Jeff Jam. We talking to to, to major Players. labels and you know, uh, 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 I, I won't just say general managers, but 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 actually executives. Right. You know, um, at at the labels and wheeling and dealing with them. So you know that that experience in itself was, you know, um, valuable. And I say it's valuable because for me, as I evolve and as I grow in the industry, I have, um, you know, um, I've come to the point to where, like I was just telling one of the guys here in the studio, you know, um, he he heard a track that I did, right? That she was playing, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Oh shit!" What you I said, "Man, that, you know how old that track is? That should sound like today." And mm -hmm. I'm like, "You know, you've never heard it, right? You know, and it sounds like I did it yesterday, but it is what it is. It's old. I'm trying to tell you that, you know, and 
I say that because I do tracks, but now I do, uh, I'm more so working on, on my left side, mm -hmm. you know, my left side of the brain, which is the, you know, the logic and, 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 you know, the, 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 the analytical side. And I've been, you know, shit, I done, ever since then, I done, I'm working on a, a, a second master's degree. I mean, and that, 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 is, that is amazing. I mean, you said you're working on a second master's. Mm -hmm. After all the successes you've had in music, all, after all the platinum records that you've been assimilated with, after basically going to a level as an engineer and producer of, I've attained the highest levels in my industry, you went back to school. Yeah. To learn more. To learn more about music, to learn more. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I went back to school because I wanted to take one uh, music appreciation class. Mm. And in taking that one music appreciation class, next thing you know, I'm doing a full semester. Mm. That full semester turned turn out to be an undergrad degree. Mm -hmm. An undergrad degree, you know, it's like... Uh, Okay, yeah, I got an undergrad degree, but uh, you know, I, I don't feel I don't feel fulfilled. So, so um, from there, and my undergrad degree is in is 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 in um, uh, uh, digital musical arts, which is mixing, you know, mastering, pro tools, uh, art. You know, I mean, this is uh, after platinum, after platinum. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all of this. I mean, and Grammys. I'm, yeah, I'm sitting in a, I'm sitting in a classroom, and yeah, you know, you know, um, uh, in labs with mixing boards, still mixing boards, and and putting projects together and making records at a university. Yeah. You know, and then after, are, are the kids that you're with like blown away that you're in the class? I with don't them? tell them nothing. Oh. But they know though because <laughs> because the damn professors is like shit. Yeah. What are you doing here? I'm, I'm, you know, look, man, I'm just trying to get. Uh, I'm just trying to do this, and 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 I am you know down to earth. I just want to learn. You know, I don't know anything. Put it that way. Yeah. I do not know anything. Well, that's what I'm, the greatest I'm, philosophers I, say. I am a a clean slate, and I just want to learn. Right. And so, um, I think with that attitude. I got to a point to where after getting my, I'm going to tell you, once I got that undergrad degree, let me tell you, man, that day felt so good. I, I, I'm, I'm like, shit, I should have done this. Uh, you know, why didn't I just, it felt so good to where immediately I said, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a master's degree. And so I went, I, I went to, to CSUN, Cal State University Northridge, and um, I started doing um, a music industry um, administration, working on a mu music industry administration um, degree. It's a master's degree, a master's program they got out there. And a lot of the professors are, you know, um, one of them, he worked for Nielsen. Um, and we learned analytics, we learned, you know, accounting, marketing, promotions. And Beyond so the board. Beyond the board, it's the other side. Like yeah, I said, you yeah. know, you know, you got this side, your creative side. I'm on this side right. now, and I'm and I am loving it because I get to also apply. Remember, I got the, the, the you know digital media arts thing over here, so I'm on Photoshop and and you know um, <laughs> Illustrator doing all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait, wait a minute, you can do that too? Yeah, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to promotions and you know doing certain things and um, so bringing them both together really, you know, I got this, uh, you know, this, I would say a hunger or a thirst for just, you know, learning what I don't know or things that I, I thought about and I was like, you know, I should know this, but, you know, whatever. It's just, it's just like continuing to learn. Continuing to learn because I remember having a conversation with somebody about a contract 
And then I went and I got a lawyer and I had a lawyer draft me a contract and I paid that lawyer $1,500 to draft this contract. And then I said, I'm going to the USC <laughs> Google School of Law and I'm going to take me a, pro, a, 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 a because I, you know, I read the, you know, a, a, about a program they have over there. Uh, which you know has a lot to do with copyrights and constitutional law and and uh, contract drafting and so on and so forth. And I mean, today I just came back from my uh, my last lecture, uh, uh, you know, contract drafting. I got to do a letter of intent. But you know, the bottom line is, I'm I'm you're in law school. I'm like fuck it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's incredible. Like, I mean, that's right really now. like, and that's really like, I mean, we know our stories and we can tell our stories about what we shared all day. Right, the crazy right. nights in the studio, right. the craziness, right? right? But at the same time, beyond all that, I mean, the continuous hunger to learn. I wanted you to talk about your prior experiences early in the 90s with Death Row and mm -hmm. all the rest and kind of go into like, you know, what happened afterwards. But the key element here that I really wanted to shine the light on mm -hmm. is even with all your successes, Mm -hmm. You continued to pursue higher learning and never stopped pursuing knowledge. I don't think I'll ever stop, to be honest with you. And, 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 and the reason being is because what I, what I realized, like, for instance, the evolution. We started where, where, where the tape reeled off, the analog tape reeled off, and I had to run in and I had to put it back on and oh man you know you focus on your job I'm just focusing on my job right to all the way to 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 click 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 what's that sound why is he the, the digital world yeah to the marble you know, of the, tire, the, yeah. the 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 bottom line is the industry and where we're at okay this music business in this music business is an ever evolving business we started off with uh, the phonogram and, you know, the piece of wax with all the, the threads cut in there and the flux and all that type of shit to, 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 to where, um, what was it, Tom's whatever, um, da, 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 da. some dude in Germany transmitted that bitch through a phone line and all of a sudden we got an MP3, mm -hmm. okay? Look at where we going next. We are in the NFT space, mm -hmm. and and the same death row we talking about, you know, or, or 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 that experience I shared with you, you know, Snoop has that label in the metaverse, mm -hmm. selling records, in, so you can see where things is 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 evolving. So, am I gonna stay here and not learn? you know, what's happening, or inform myself, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because I think that's what it is, that, you know, I'm, I, my quest is to be an informed citizen. Yeah. Period, you right. know what I mean? Just to break it down, I don't know everything. I'm not, the, I, I'll put it this way, I'm not the smartest, you know, uh, or the sharpest pencil in the, in the bunch, but I'm sharp. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, you, uh, you, know, you can still use, yeah. you know, use me. So, so, so for me, it's, it's continuing to stay on top of my game, you know, in all aspects of things. Because I look back right now and I say, you know, it, in, my, in, in, in my younger days, in, in, the, in the death row days, based on my experience, if I had, you know, um, a little bit of the knowledge that I have right now, you know, that whole journey might have been way different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that because, yeah. you know, it's... Because it, it, you are who you are now. I am who I am right now. And the, again, I will always say that you can't take that experience from me. No. I already had that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm going, I'm having a whole different experience. It's not the same experience. And um, I feel that that the quest, my quest to learn as much as I can and stay as sharp as I can is, is it, it's a mental thing, you know. Um, I think that, that it, for me, um, 
a, a healthy mindset mm -hmm. is very, very important because, you know, I know now, I know now what I can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like riding a bike. You know, I could do this all day. You know, I can sit in front of a board and push play and edit and do that all day. There's some other things that I, I, I'm getting more, uh, I'm getting sharp with, mm -hmm. you know, some, some additional information, you know, and a new way of analyzing certain, you know, a certain thought process that I'm digging. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, this, is, this works for me. Like I was telling somebody today, you know, some people wake up and they go to a fucking job, whatever that job may be, and, you know, they earn some monies for, you know, the job that they do, and they have a certain value. And at a certain point, they don't like that shit. Mm -hmm. Well, I wake up every day, and the job that I have, I can't wait to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, do this. Do that. You know, I don't feel you know, restrained or I don't have any resentment or anything like that because I can do this. I can go to USC, sit in on a lecture, ask a bunch of questions, come back here, do it again, go home. I got a studio at the crypt. <laughs> so, you know, mm -hmm. if I need to do some of this work, like a lot of this work right here, I, I, I actually did the dialogue editing at home. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of like, I mean, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're living your joy. <laughs> Look, it's, it's, it's where I am. I, you know, like the last time I spoke to you, I was in South Carolina. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm in South Carolina. Dude, you know, uh, you know, because you, you, I, I, I want to come up to, to, to your farm or to, to, to um, Seattle because I want to I wanna walk through those woods. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's nice and green up there. Mm -hmm. and Get you on the golf course. You, on the golf course, uh, you know, all that. But the bottom line is I, I'm, I'm, start, I'm, I'm getting off on that, you know, that serenity, of just walking through. It's a meditation. An area where I'm just hearing birds. Yeah, being back with nature. You know, nature. I'm connecting with nature and, you know, it's kind of like one of the things I used to get off on when I was in South Carolina is we you know, got these trails next to the river. And so we get up and go biking and stuff like that. And I sit there, dude, and I, I, ever once I thought I could do a, 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 a half hour meditation, just sit there and just, you know what I'm saying? But that's also part of the evolution. Yeah. So you now the I'm meditation, saying? also the clean eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Clean, the sobriety. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. been how long now? Uh, going on 13 years. Right. 13 years. I, 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 ain't, I ain't smoked nothing, drank nothing. <laughs> we both I about... Even, I didn't eat meat. <laughs> this story's the same. Isn't that amazing? You know what I'm it's yeah. like we walked out of Sea Real Studios yeah. and we, we decided to become modern Monks. day yo yogis. <laughs> yogis. Yeah, it's just, crazy. Dude, you know, I'm glad you said that because it's kind of, you know, um, let me straight up, you know, like I, I, I started going to, to, to like 12 step programs after that, because one of the things after, after, after leaving Seattle, <laughs> no, 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 hear me out, hear me out. I start, and it's not because of, of Seattle, it's because I got back to Los Angeles and I continued mm -hmm. in, in, in my same old hat, but you know, I had them pills mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Dude, I, I, them pills smacked me upside my head, mm -hmm. and 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 I, I remember ending up in the the L.A. County Jail, mm. and w and waking up and going, "What the fuck am I doing here?" Mm -hmm. And um, then I said, "Okay, yo, you know what? I need to cut all this shit out," and I couldn't. Mm. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Was, mm -hmm. What the fuck is wrong with me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh gosh, why am I shaking this shit? Mm -hmm. And so. You know, I you know, being a veteran, as you know, I got I had therapists and shit like that, and my therapist was like, I was like, man, I can't stop doing this shit, and she, and she sent me to UCLA, mm -hmm. and the whole that whole sobriety thing started, mm -hmm. and it was a game changer, mm -hmm. 
And when I say it was a game changer, you know, it wasn't easy, but I, I wanted to make a change. And once I made that change, it's like, once I got that clarity, put it that way, once that I got choice. my fucking head out that cloud yeah. and I could look around, it's like, ooh wee. Yeah, it's a beautiful life. It's a beautiful life, you right. know what I mean? And, and I got to the point, it wasn't until around, around, around year, I say around year five, year six or whatever, when I realized because, you know, I was, I was, you know, eating well wasn't, you know, I said, you know, I need, I need another challenge. And then I went vegan. Yeah. And I was like, you eat no meat. I'm going to do that. I'm just going <laughs> to. I'm just being the best human being I can be. I'm not expecting anything. Mm -hmm. And I can go on and tell you incident after incident after incident where I just try and be the best me. If I can help you, I can help you. I try and learn to be the best me. And that's where all of the, you know, the, 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 the academics is being, is being helpful because I believe, you know, that my academic journey is enabling me to analyze certain situations a lot different than I used to and to think differently. Be in you uncomfortable I mean? situations to grow. Be, being in uncomfortable situations and just being un uncomfortable and being okay, allowing myself to be okay with it. This is uncomfortable, but I'm, I'm good. Well, LP, what it sounds like is you went from master engineer to master engineering your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I laugh, but, but um, I'm still trying to get, you know, to get to that master engineering part. You know, I would say um, participating in the engineering of my life, but I have a whole lot more to learn. And, and, and the one thing is I, 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 I believe, and I tell myself this all the time, that I have to remain teachable. I have to remain teachable because it's the moment when I think I know everything that shit just falls fucking apart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I'm proving that you don't know shit. But it doesn't fall apart because it's meant to be put back together in a way that you want to put right, it back together. Right, right, Humpty Dumpty, they put his ass back together and I, you know, they'll put me back together too. But I say that to say, you know, it's, it, 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 there are those moments when we think we know everything when yeah. really we, come on, man. You just woke up this morning, and that's what you know. That's you it. know what I'm saying? That's it. So live. <laughs> live. live. And we'll continue living together. I love you, brother. Indeed. That's right.